So let's consider some of these topics from previous students and pick one that we could use for a literature uh, paper. And let's say we pick multiple sclerosis. And for the sake of argument, let's go to the Biomedical Library website, which is hsl.lib.umn.edu slash biomed. And it comes up with PubMed as its default search engine. And we can put in multiple sclerosis as a search term and click go. And it comes up with <clears throat> 78,945 hits, much more than you'll ever need. And so one of the first things you'd want to do is just say, I want to limit the range of the papers that I'm seeing to the last 10 years. And by limiting the range of the papers to the last 10 years, you get down from 78,000 down to about 38,000. And that's still many more than you want to consider. So one of the things to remember about multiple sclerosis is that multiple sclerosis is this disease of the motor neurons where the myelin, which normally covers the uh, motor neurons, is damaged or missing and it affects the conduction of action potentials from the cell body down to the muscles. So if we go back to our search, we can say, what if we add myelin as a search term to our refined search for the last 10 years? And now we've dropped it to 3854, uh, so we've decreased it by an order of magnitude. It's starting to get more reasonable. Um, what else would we want to think about as a search term for multiple sclerosis? Um, perhaps, uh, let's see, we're looking at some of their best matches for multiple sclerosis, and one of the things that you could do is just say, let's switch to the best match order. Actually, it went up a little bit, but um, one of the things that we might want to look for is re- my, uh, myelination, that is restoring myelin to uh, the motor neuron and search for that. And now we're down to less than a thousand, 781 papers. And the thing I'd like to point out about uh, searches that you get through PubMed or most search engines is that they tend to be organized um, by um, the um, best, well, in this case we've selected best match, but we can also uh, switch back to most recent. When we go to most recent, it's now less than 700, slightly less than 700, using our multiple sclerosis myelin remyelination keywords. Um, when you look at most recent, uh, I like that view because it gives you the most recent papers first, so Here's publication June 5th, May 31st, um, May 29th, and the deeper you go into the search, the further back it goes. So, um, and this gives you an opportunity to scan through some of the most recent papers and try to um, see if there's something here that interests you. Now, here's a paper. It says vitamin C promotes oligodendrocytes generations, regeneration and uh, remyelination. And oligodendrocytes are the um, glial cells that form uh, the myelin in the central nervous system. And so what if we add to our search here vitamin C? And we've down to one paper. My goodness. Well, that may be a little bit too tight because you would like to see what other things may um, help to uh, provide for remyelination. So let's back up a bit. 
take that one out. And instead of vitamin C, let's put in antioxidant, which vitamin C is. Twelve papers. How about that? Now, I'm not saying that these are the only twelve papers that I would search for, but these are certainly twelve papers that I might be really interested in, and it includes our paper on vitamin C, but it also talks about other issues related to antioxidants um, and how they may uh, provide some relief of symptoms of um, multiple sclerosis. Let's pick one of them. This quetipine, I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced, fumarate for the treatment of multiple sclerosis, a focus on myelin repair. This is from 2013, so about five years ago. And so if we look at this paper, it says that they're focusing on myelin repair. Um, they first identify what their focal point is, multiple sclerosis, where there is progressive loss of oligodendrocytes that form the myelin. Um, they also then say that their drug of choice is an antipsychotic that may have some remyelinating neuroprotective properties in inflammation and uh, non-inflammation roles. And they go on to say that their treatment using this drug um, have been beneficial in stimulating uh, proliferation and maturation of oligodendrocytes. If you wanted to find this particular paper, the university has added to PubMed this Find It link. Now, if you use PubMed and you're outside of the university environment, you don't get the Find It link. You probably just get this full text online um, from Wiley, which is a uh, journal publisher. But let's click the Find It link. And what this tells you is uh, that the university has subscribed to the Wiley Online Library. And if you click on Wiley, then now you get the research paper. And so here's the summary or abstract, the introduction, some of the mechanisms. And this is their mo some of the models that have been um, used for trying to um, initiate remyelination. And they talk about their drug, and how it might work, and some of the other side effects of the drug. Now, one of the things that I note by looking at this particular article is this is more of a review of the um, use of this drug than it is a research article. And for that reason, I would say not a primary source. It tells us right up here it's a review. I missed that when we first got to this page. We want to find some research articles and uh, as our primary sources. Review articles can be good for giving us background and context, but they are not primary sources. So we go back, and we go back, and we go back. Let's try something from um, 2017, the Brain Research Bulletin. Again, looking at my multiple sclerosis being a demyelination disease. And the use of a drug to try to, pre to prevent the demyelination and perhaps to initiate remyelination. It will go to find it. follow the link. Well, that was unsatisfactory. Here it comes. So, they're looking at a flavonoid called bicalion. Attenuates cuprazone induced demyelinization. So, s slows down the demyelinization. 
and cuprozone apparently is a chemical that can induce demyelination so you can use it to produce an animal model. So the cuprozone model is established mouse model of MS. So that tells you again that's another keyword that you might use in searching for um, animal models of multiple sclerosis is this cuprozone model which helps you to identify something that um, is, initiates de uh, demyelination. They found that using their Bacallian attenuated weight loss, motor dysfunction in these cuprozone model mice and so they think that it might be a good anti-inflammatory uh, that could participate in a treatment for uh, multiple sclerosis and so now you can look through the introduction how they have uh, uh, took care of their animal models um, how they tested their animals how they treated them and start to look at the data and you can see the differences between the ones that have cuprazone and the ones that are treated with the uh, bicalion and they have some slides of the tissue from the animals now this is one way to look at a research paper. One of the other things that I often do is just I want to download a copy and I will download the PDF. And when you download the PDF you get a copy of the paper just as it was published in the journal. Alright, so that was an interesting walk through multiple sclerosis. Let's see what we do if we go back to our original search and then go back to the Biomedical Library website and scroll down to databases and let's try Ovid Medmon. So the Ovid Medline database is going to come up and it will give us a different interface to the same database. And we can start like we started before. Here is where you start putting in your keywords down here. Up here is going to, it's going to keep track of each time you add a keyword. Um, so that's one of the things that's sometimes useful about Ovid. It helps you to walk through your searches and then perhaps walk back. Um, so let's put in multiple sclerosis and we search. Now one of the first things that happens in the Medline search is first is it gives you this, um, it asks you is, is this what you want to search multiple sclerosis and when it says auto explode, exploding means that they have a set list of keywords that are associated with multiple sclerosis which they will include in the search. Uh, you can use that or you can turn it off or you can just search for multiple sclerosis as a keyword and if you want to just search as multiple, and this will be most closely uh, aligned with what you would get in PubMed if you just do the multiple sclerosis as a keyword and then say continue. And when you do this then it tells us again that this is still over 70,000 but it gets a slightly different number because it's a different database it searches with a different algorithm and you get all of these multiple sclerosis papers and we want to specify our year range and so we want to publication year from 2008 to 2018 and then do our search again and so up here it tells us first we had 73,000 and then when we limited it to 2008 to 2018 it dropped down to 36,000 so that's all there and it's easy to see that we've reduced the number and if we then go and want to add myelin as a keyword, number one was our, or number two was our search for the last 10 years for multiple sclerosis as a keyword. So let's just put in number two and say and myelin. And 
adding myelin drops it down to 39.24 and if we want to then go to the next thing that we tried we'd say 3 and antioxidants and down to 33. So you note that the numbers aren't exactly the same. Like I said, it's a different way of searching the database, and so it comes up with slightly different numbers. Um, the, each time you uh, click search or hit return after putting in a keyword, um, it updates this list of papers that are shown below here that uh, are the results of your search. So these would be the 33 papers that we have now identified that uh, contain both uh, multiple sclerosis, myelin, and antioxidant as part of the uh, search history. Um, some of the papers that you find in a list like this will be the same as the papers that you saw in uh, the PubMed search, and occasionally you'll find a few that are different uh, because of the way the different search engines work. And here again, we can, if, can focus on a particular paper. If we click on the link, then it gives us uh, the name of the uh, article, the journal it was published in, uh, the authors and their institutions. And down here, we see an abstract. And this abstract is actually quite compact. Usually, they have much more detail. As with PubMed, through the Biomedical Library, you still have a Find It link. And one of the things that I find is that, uh, that Ovid uses pop-ups, and sometimes you may have um, a pop-up blocker on your, uh, spread on your uh, web browser. Um, and so you may have to click a, a link on the page in order to get Ovid to display uh, this page that tells us that we can find this uh, article here and cl under clinical keys and again here's the title here's the abstract some of the highlights of this article um, the highlights here this is a feature of, of particular journals some journals will actually uh, require that the authors list some highlights so that it helps people when they're searching uh, to find things that they're interested in. And some will also include what's called a graphical abstract, which is images that may uh, help to give a quick synopsis of what the paper's about. Um, but again, uh, you search, uh, you continue to scroll down, you see details of the paper. And if you want to um, look at the paper as it was published in the journal article, you look for that PDF icon and click on that and you find your article as it was published. So if you're interested in a topic like multiple sclerosis or any topic in general, what you do is you start with your basic keyword, what is it, and then you start adding modifiers that may help you to go down a particular track. One of the benefits of using the Ovid Medline type of search approach is that if you go back to your main search page, it gives you a list of how you changed it each time, how, ch how you changed your search, how you um, uh, your search was refined with each of those modifications and say for example we don't want to use antioxidants um, but we would like to add a different term to multiple sclerosis and myelin limited to the last 10 years we can go back and we can just start with three again and add something different and um, in this case let's say let's add um, cognitive sometimes multiple sclerosis because uh, it deals with myelination of neurons can result in some cognitive deficits and it asks us what do you mean cognitive what and so let's just say cognitive disorders and cognition as the 
subheadings we'd like to include, and then we say continue. Okay, so one of the things that I did is I realize now I, I included them with OR. OR gives you a much more expansive um, search. So I'm going to try that search again, and it was three and cognitive. And it's cognitive as a keyword instead of um, adding the other cognition and cognition disorders. And we go down to 88 papers from 3924. Now you notice that some of the other searches have now scrolled off the screen, but you can see them again if you click on the expand, which shows you everything. And if you show contract, then it shows you just your most recent searches. And now we're down to 88 papers, and we can scroll through here. And we look at use of neuroprotective drugs and neurorehabilitation of multiple sclerosis. Um, uh, pet white matter imaging and cognitive function in late multiple sclerosis. Um, let's see. The translator protein ligand XBD173 improves clinical symptoms and neuropathology markers in this mouse model of multiple sclerosis. So you can step back into your search you can add new keywords and you can then move forward on a slightly different path. As with the um, search we did from PubMed, uh, or as and even the first, first search we did here for this lipoic acid, um, you can uh, download the papers using this interface. So this is an example of uh, how you might negotiate either PubMed or uh, Ovid Medline as an option for searching uh, for a topic um, for your paper. I hope that it's been useful to you and if you have questions please let me know.